tonight, the Prime Minister pitching another home run for the upcoming Bahamas Carnival. And coming up in sports, Long Island reigns supreme at this weekend's Rock Sandy Luther Regatta. So don't you move, the Bahamas Tonight the Weekend Edition starts now. Now in HD. Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Everyday. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. Thanks so much for joining us. Topping the news tonight, Commonwealth Secretary General Kamalash Sharma arrived in the Bahamas today for a three-day official visit. During his trip to Nassau, Mr. Sharma will meet with the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Attorney General, and other senior government officials. He will be discussing preparations for the 2015 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, the head statement on post-2015 development agenda, and other Commonwealth issues. On Tuesday, September 30th, Secretary General Sharma will deliver a public lecture on youth and the Commonwealth at the College of the Bahamas Harry Seymour Auditorium as part of the Emerging Leaders Distinguished Lecture Series. Stay tuned to the ZNS Network for details on this story. There was much excitement in the air at the Bahamas Carnival Road Fever Ex Expo this weekend, which promises to be the best carnival in the world. Bands that helped signed up showcase costumes and did their best to attract persons to register. Our Jimonita Swain tells us that Prime Minister Perry Christie was blown away by what he saw. Junkanoo sounds pulsated through Cable Beach Saturday, just moments before Prime Minister Perry Christie arrived at Melianasso Beach Resort to view the Bahamas Carnival Bands. Prime Minister Christie said when he entered the room, he was overwhelmed to see the beautiful costumes and people. And being told there are some 35 or 36 groups already, 35, 35 groups who are proposing to come out, it means that we are on the verge of starting something that is going to be spectacular in its impact in our country. The Prime Minister expects Bahamas Carnival 2015 to be heavily promoted by the Ministry of Tourism. So what I would expect is that as we move into the coming year, the Ministry of Tourism marketing campaign would kick in. That would include cruise ships being encouraged to position themselves here during that week. People who will be on those cruise ships being able to buy costumes and be able to play in the mass. Junkanoo icon and technical resource for the Bahamas National Festival Commission, Percy Bola Francis, stressed that only best practices are being encouraged. People are now going to understand the importance of doing business now. And PM, you can actually say that this Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival will be one of the best carnivals that the world has ever seen. Obama Senior Vice President of Governmental and External Affairs Robert Sands looks forward to the carnival impacting tourism in a major way. We're going to be bringing incremental guests to the Bahamas in shoulder periods and the multiplier effect of that is just phenomenal. Uh, they will stay in hotels, really participate in food and beverage, artisans, etc. So we're extremely excited about this event. Bahamas Carnival will take place May 7th through 9th, 2015 with events like Junkamania, Music Masters, Midnight Rush and Road Fever. Jiminita Swain, ZNS Network News. Inmates at the Bahamas Department of Corrections can now speak to their loved ones through a prepaid phone system that was recently outfitted within the housing units. Commissioner of Corrections Patrick Wright confirmed the system will be available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and all conversations between the party and the inmate will be recorded. The commissioner believes this could significantly decrease cell phone usage in prison, but more importantly, he claims it fulfills a key component of the correctional facilities mandate. Um, one of the key components going forward it's family you know family inmates family and the inmates in here we got to keep that bond of family going especially husband to separate from wives and kids contraband is a part of, uh, of prison life all over the world the bigger the bigger the prison the bigger the problem um, but the training we are offering our officers we believe, you know, many of them or all of them is going to keep their hands clean. 
Crossing over now to news from the crime beat, an overnight shooting in the Fox Hill area has left one man dead and three others, including a female, detained in hospital. Police confirmed that around 10 o'clock last night, the deceased, along with two other men and a female, were sitting outside a local business establishment on Grace Terrace off Bernard Road when someone allegedly fired several shots at them, hitting the deceased to the head, the woman to the thigh, one man to the leg, and another man to the stomach. The deceased was later pronounced dead, while the other three victims are detained in serious condition in hospital tonight. Police are appealing to anyone with information to contact them anonymously as soon as possible. An intense investigation continues. Over in Andros, police there are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a 51-year-old man of Mangrove Key, Andros, who apparently drowned while on a fishing trip yesterday. Preliminary reports indicate that shortly before 4 p.m., the victim was on a fishing trip with his sons in waters just off Mangrove Key when one of them fell overboard. The victim attempted to rescue his son and apparently drowned during the process. The victim was pronounced dead by the island's local doctor. An autopsy will be performed to determine the exact cause of death. There is no doubt that the island of Eleuthera continues to be poised for further development. Deputy Prime Minister Philip Davis told our news team this weekend that he would like to see Eleutherans gain more benefits from the cruise ship that regularly docks at Princess Key in South Eleuthera. So I had a tour of Princess Key this morning to see what they are doing and how they are adding value to the various communities. I'm happy that uh, they, have, they have engaged uh, Lutra Adventure Stores, which is owned and operated by Bahamians, uh, headed by uh, Tony Sands, uh, and he seemed to have the idea of trying to find ways and means of putting more of what's happening there into the economy. He re estimated that last year $400,000 was at least spent in the, for the, in the season that the boats were coming in from Princess Key through the tour, various stores that he's been setting up. And once we build on that, um, hopefully we'll find more of what's happening basically trickling into the various communities and into the pockets of our, the, the residents of those communities. Meanwhile, Central and South Eleuther MP Damien Gomez says he is deeply concerned about the construction of the new hospital set for that island. The hospital is coming. Um, we hope to have construction begin this year for that so that um, by the 2017, we can have that opened and available to the public. What's the location for the hospital? That's Palmetto Point. Uh, and um, we are hoping to also have a new administrative complex similar to what um, was constructed in Abaco, constructed here in um, Eleuthera. And that would be in Governor's Harbor. Officials from the Bahamas Hotel and Tourism Association continue to work with the Ministry of Finance to ensure that the sector is ready for the implementation of value-added tax at a rate of 7.5% on January 1, 2015. While still addressing a number of industry-specific concerns, BHTA's Executive Vice President Suzanne P Patouche revealed to ZNS News that a lot of progress has been made so far. The Ministry of Finance has been very receptive um, because obviously these are uh, industry specific concerns and you know we are expressing them continuously with them and, and finding resolves or way that we can move forward. Um, so the concerns are diminishing in that capacity as we um, as we address specific aspects. It's still work in progress um, but we like we said we've made a lot of progress to date and we will continue to do so. The tourism executive believes it's crucial for the sector to be ready as the focus must now be on preparing for VAT's implementation and administration. There are certain elements uh, in terms of the rollout, etc. To us, it's about the industry being ready and to understand what they have to do as operators of their business to, um, you know, to file and to be compliant and to uh, understand what is required of them um, for this new tax regime. And still to come, Hands for Hunger raising funds to feed thousands. The weekend edition continues right after this.